just because I'm not, you know, the Sharia, there's something called Sharia law. Okay, you can look into this, the Bukhari, everything. You can look into this. There's something called this law where I'm not just someone that's become too westernized or doesn't wear the hijab. I'm an apostate. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, 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 that alone is, is enough. Apostate, what is... Apostate, I'm an infidel. I mean, infidel, okay. infidel. Basically, an apostate is one that leaves is born of the Islamic religion, mm-hmm. you know, born of that origin, or origin, and it ha- like my bloodline, mm-hmm. like generational. This is not some, oh, right. yeah, it's generational. That means if you look back into my family history, there's no one else that have broken away from that faith. I'm the only one out of my dad has told me many times because he's proud, 150 generations. So I'm the first one. Oh. So that, 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 you know, there's, so your 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 day of of is Saturdays or Fridays that you go to the mosque? Mosque. Uh, when I was in in New York, it was Saturdays. Okay. But when I was here in Ohio, they had something called the halakha. You know, Fridays we do go to Fridays. When I was in the summer, especially we go to Fridays, cause, but we couldn't do it in the school year because my yeah, we were at school. Yeah, right. So yeah, and I was during the day at around one o'clock, twelve one. And that's usually Fridays, like the Sunday for you know type of thing. But now after we came here we had something called the halakha. Mm-hmm. And the halakha is usually from the ones that we, it's every week, we want from Saturdays. Um, Saturdays were the main days that we did. Sometimes it was switched to Sunday depending on what the family wanted. It was really kind of like a youth group type of thing where a lot of the families from the community got together and, and, and there was an imam there that spoke and, and the kids were the ones that memorized the pages and pages from the Quran. And that was something your mother and father had you go to the Yes, exactly. My okay. father, of course, that was a problem with going to a lot of events in the mosque because my dad wasn't there to take us, so they would call people from the community and they would help arrange rides okay. for my mom for, so for them to take me. being, what was that term you used? I said orthodox, you said it was? Devout. Devout, being yeah. very devout. How did you reconcile that? With, you went to a public school, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. How did you reconcile the dress and the food and all that stuff? All that stuff with what? Big you know, question. Very, okay. Here's the thing. Um, me being a cheerleader, that's like, okay, you, your parents are devout. How can they ever have you do that? My parents didn't really understand what cheerleading was. Not to mention the dresses, you know, we dress very conservatively in this family mm-hmm. thing. And when I went home, I would wear sweat, like, sweatpants underneath my skirts. So it's, it would all be, you know, my mom would be fine with it. She really didn't understand what it was. Not to mention how did I, basically, you know, I should be wearing hijab to school and things of that sort, right? But usually they teach their kids when they're younger to do it. But my, remember, mind you, my family's the first family that has ever come to the United States. And they thought, you know, we're still going to be as devout. You know, the culture's not going to change you. You're not going to be westernized. Nothing like that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But, they, you know, as I got older, things change. But one requirement I was, I could not compromise with that, is I had to wear all of the clothes and things of that to the mosque and to the Saturday hearings and to any uh, affiliation with when you're doing religious activities and things of that okay. sort. So you had to wear your, your religious clothing, the clothing mm-hmm. that you, yes, exactly. you went to religious activities, but not necessarily when to you were school. Uh, to, to school, school or when you went out shopping or anything of that nature. And yeah, there was definitely a more conservative like way that I had to dress like, than my friends, you know, of course, but for example, thinking of halal food, there's, uh, you cannot eat anything that, you can't eat any meat that's not halal. Halal in their terms is before they cut the meat, they have to, they, the imam says a uh, prayer and that the food is not cleansed, you know? Okay. So, you know, at school, that wasn't necessarily the case, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, I, yeah, my parents expected me not to eat any of that stuff and, and things of that sort. I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, before I did, my, you need guys to understand. Before I became a believer four years ago, I mean, man, I to see my dad smile when I read the Quran and memorized it, I, I yearned for love. You know, the only way that my dad was proud of me mm-hmm. was when I, I memorized pages from the Quran and I would sit there and, and he was just so proud that his daughter was was learning all these things. But I, yeah, I did follow everything before I became came to know the Lord. As my Lord, as All right, let's, let's kind of progress here. How did you first get introduced to the Christian faith? Christian faith. Okay, this is my testimony. <laughs> you guys ready? <laughs> All right, I've said this like a billion times, but I love it. Here's the thing. Um, I grew up with a lot of fear mm-hmm. um, in the sense of I really had a distorted view of what a father was like. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay. You say you grew up with fear. Why fear. did you grow up with fear? My dad. Um, what did he do to make you afraid? 
He beat me. Okay. Um, and I, things, I mean, a lot of small punishments, you know, were... Yeah. Take your time. <laughs> we, we, went, we went into the hard part, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, I love talking fine. about Jesus, but this is something that I... Well, he'll help you get through this too, okay? Amen. Um, yeah. Well, I, for example, I remember this one hits me. Um, I was too loud one day. I was talking to my mom, and they were they were busy having a conversation, and it just like I was really excited about something. I remember they wanted to tell my dad, and I was it's too loud, and my father because I'm tiny, you know, he can, mm -hmm. yeah, and so he actually just he slammed me in the face with his hand to to quiet me down. Mm -hmm. So things were like that were used to straighten me out. Those were punishments for me. I remember as a child, I'd have marks. I'd find marks on me, and uh, I'd rem I, I, it would go back to as a child, especially in Sri Lanka, where that was, you were thrown a lot. Like, if you cried too much and you didn't, you know, mm -hmm. you weren't quiet, beating was very much used. Um, I remember one time here in America, I was in the car, and uh, I was in the front seat of the car, and my dad was taking, taking us to the mosque. And we were about to pick up a lady, you know, to take her as well with my mom. Mm -hmm. And because we were, you know, and, and before we go to the mosque, we have to wear the job and everything of that sort. And, and I was, and my dad, you know, we're about to pull in, and I remember him. Uh, we're nearby. We're not in the parking lot yet, but we're nearby getting to the new Islamic mosque. I remember him, you know, you know, put on your hijab, put on your hijab. So kind of refused. I didn't say it out, oh, of course not. I couldn't do that. But kind of like think of it. And I, I put it on, of course, but then I, as we were driving, I slumped down in this because I was embarrassed. And I remember my dad looking at me with such anger. He was just so angry, and he socked me in the face with his hand. And just, I, I, my face was burning. Mm -hmm. I, like, I felt, I, I don't know where, I, I was just burning. Um, things like that. I, yeah, um, what else? How old were you at that time? I was about... What grade was I in? I was probably about eighth grade. So it was about two, two, three years ago. Um, two, two, three, three years ago. Um, my my friends actually they saw in middle school especially we were in the locker room one day and uh, I was changing clothes and they had seen some things that really scared them. And uh, which which friends are these? Um, in in could you want their names? Yes, please. Stacy Andrews. Stacy Andrus. Yes, okay. Andrus in New Albany. New Albany. Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Yeah, and she was one of the girls that saw this, and she was really like, "What's going on?" And you, of course. Do you happen to know her dress better? Than no, okay. I don't. I'm sorry. Um, but I told, I lied to her. I said that I, you know, I, I started playing a volleyball, so I was like, I just fall a lot, and she's like, "That doesn't look like just falling," and so she was really worried, and she went to the counselors, and uh, a lot of. They didn't really do much, but... Uh, do you know who the counselors were? She no. Okay. It was just a school, middle school counselors, and they didn't find What was the middle school? New Albany Middle School. <laughs> I went to the same school um, for middle school. And so when I say I grew up in fear, I was very much afraid of my dad. You know, um, It's funny that being here in a home that if you... It's just so, it's just so amazing that... What about your mom? Were you in fear from your mom? Mom? You know, not really as much as my dad, definitely not as much as my dad, sure. dad, but not really. You know, she was, she got angry a lot at me, you know, I was very much used to, she just said a lot of hurtful words and I felt like just emotionally I was torn by her, mm -hmm. just, you know, a lot of critical things, but uh, other than she, she wasn't like my dad though, but my dad, um, he's definitely someone I fear, but I mean. What's your brother's? My brothers, my brothers, me, I love my little brother. You know, he's, okay. I love him to death. He's, he's someone that, you know, I, I've been sent him a lot. Uh -huh. So we really, we have a bond that, uh, and every time I see a little kid now, it's like, oh my gosh, my heart melts. But as I was saying before, being placed in a foster family now that doesn't, I won't get hit for dropping something, <laughs> you know, and it's so, so crazy, like, I don't have to live in fear anymore. Okay. Did he just hit you with his hand, or did he ever hit you with any, anything? No, he was pretty strong. I mean, I was little. If he just pushed me a little, I could go to a wall. You're still pretty small. <laughs> I am, but... You're I, very petite. 
I don't have to live in fear of my yeah. dad. You know? Like, I won't get hit. All right. Okay. You're, you're, you're here now, okay? But, um, I'm sorry. It's all right. Take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Please, no, you just come back. I don't have any tissues or anything. Do you need some water or something? Uh, that'll be good, thank you. Let's see if we can get some water or... <laughs> 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 it's alright, it's alright. We'll change the subject here for a <laughs> 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 Yeah. 